It's finally time for me to film this video. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while and I've been putting it off for all of the reasons that I tend to put off videos like this. It's I feel like I'm going to to leave things out, that how I feel about it is going to change and it just kind of like paralyzes me from actually sort of like sitting down and telling the narrative, but I realized that there's so much other content related to this that I want to put out, but I would like to have this video out first as sort of like a background and an underlying narrative to other videos that I'm going to put out, like DJ Demo and the other day I was digging for music online and I thought that that whole process would make a cool video too, like how I create dig or look for new music online. And for anyone that's sort of new to my channel, because I know that I've talked about my relationship to music and my history with DJing and all of that in like bits and starts in other videos, but I'm not sure it's ever been, well I know, it's never been centralized in one place. And that's what I want this video to be, sort of my narrative around music and its relationship in my life, but also how it's evolved or I guess come into my awareness as being a spiritual practice. What I'm going to talk about today is just my avenue, I guess, or expression for how I've come to experience some more... I guess sort of meta experiences really. I think that whatever the avenue is in your life for experiencing the types of things I'm going to talk about, I think that that varies so much from person to person. So it's like I want this video to be about how much I love house music, how it's sort of like been my one true love in life in a way because it's been an area of my life that I experience on like a truly sentient level, if that makes sense, an embodied level. It's not mental at all, and it's one of the only things in my life that I can say that has channeled something sort of divine or beyond me, expansive, all of those words that you would want to use. I think a lot of people might find that expression through music, different kinds of music. It's certainly not house music for a lot of people, actually, but to people that are into house music, I think that they'll probably understand what I'm talking about. But I think the arts in general, that sort of seems to be their purpose, is tapping into this part of us to those that are so inclined. Okay, so I want to start with sort of my history with music when I first started tapping into feelings around music, even if I didn't have a framework to understand what they were, and then sort of my evolution into falling in love with house music. We'll see how long that takes me. I would also like to give you guys sort of the story around DJing, because house music and DJing for me are married and it's hard for me to talk about one without the other and let's just see where we end up with that. When I thought back about music's place in my life, how I started experiencing music, the very first time I ever remembered the feeling or a feeling or feeling like I was in a different vibrational space. I don't really have a better language to talk about it than that. I was in second grade, maybe third grade, which is age seven or eight. It was sometime around there. I got a Debbie Gibson. I think the album was Out of the Blue. I think that's what the name of the album was. Cassette tape. I actually still have that cassette tape somewhere. <laughs> and it was the song Shake Your Love by Debbie Gibson. I was so obsessed with that song and I was subsequently so obsessed with that whole cassette. Now I'm gonna spare you like all of the intricacies of my music development through elementary and high school, but the very abridged version is after that Debbie Gibson cassette tape, I fell in love with how music could make me feel. It was sort of an escape in a way, honestly. You know, I went through this huge love affair with female vocalists, that's always sort of been my thing. I absolutely loved Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson, Paula Abdul, I mean all of them, all of them around that time frame. And then when I got into high school, I got very, very into R&B, Neo Soul, uh, people like Erica Badu, uh, Lauren Hill. Um, I was into a lot of hip hop as well. I guess who wasn't in the 90s? It was like such a golden era for music. I should also say that during this time frame, it was honestly right around the same time, I started taking classical piano lessons at age eight. I think seven or eight it was like literally around the same time 
maybe there's a link now that I'm saying that out loud. And I ended up taking piano lessons for the next 15 or so years all the way through high school and then when I would come home from college in the summer times I would take lessons with my teacher and that was like kind of super super fun like when I was coming home during the summer in college to play the piano and like take lessons I mean it was really like after all of those years of learning technique and practice to be able to sit down and work on like a Rachmaninoff over the course of a summer was like so gratifying you know and that was when I really kind of had the most fun really. I played a lot of Debussy when I was in high school and then Rachmaninoff and Chopin were my other two favorites. Sadly I have tried to go home and just like sight read music like duets with my sister when we're home over the holidays and it is it kind of breaks my heart about how I can't really play anymore so I guess like if you haven't practiced in a decade or whatever you do kind of lose it. I think I would probably pick it up quite quickly if I were to ever take lessons again or really invest but yeah piano was a really big part of my life um, growing up you know I give so much credit to my parents who my mom in particular my dad more in theory my mom more in practice um, they really thought that music was super super important a super super important part of creating and raising well-rounded kids I guess my sister the same took piano lessons the same amount of time and everything and we played other instruments as well but that's a bit longer of a foray than I wanted to take there so that's a sort of you know childhood through going off to college now when I went off to college I was still pretty much listening to a lot of the same stuff that I had in high school a lot of soul neo soul a lot of like frat party music like Nelly and um, you know just like popular music at the time this was like the early 2000s and then everything sort of started to change around my senior year in college and the subsequent years after I got out of college so I was 20 between the ages of like 22 and 24 around this time I stumbled into what I learned eventually was down tempo or sort of like acid jazz. I came from like a really rural small town and there just was not really any exposure to dance music or anything outside of like really the mainstream, at least I was not aware of it. When I discovered jazzy down tempo, eventually things like trip hop and then into house music, I really had no idea what I was listening to. I guess I will say, now that I'm saying that, when I was in high school, I did like <laughs> cheesy dance music. Like I'm thinking of La Bouche. I don't know if anyone ever listened to them or CNC Music Factory, popular dance music. It wasn't any, there was nothing underground about any of that stuff. But I think with the combination of female vocals, female vocalists that I loved and some kind of electronic dance music, I was sort of like primed and ready to fall in love with house music. If you go back and listen to people like Madonna or Janet or even Mariah, like she was, she had like David Morales remixes on Butterfly and stuff like that. Like that's all in the same sort of genre. So in some ways I was exposed to it, but I had no idea that house music was like an actual genre or thing or that there were all these sub genres. So then right around college and graduating from college, I stumbled on this compilation of remixes called Verve Remixed and I think that there are now three editions of this. They're remixes of classic tracks like Nina Simone, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, remixed by more contemporary, I will say electronica broadly artists, but like some house, some more sort of down tempo. And I fell in love. Like I remember listening to Wait Till You See Him, the D Faz remix, and Return to Paradise. To Was like I don't this is so I didn't think this was gonna be this hard to actually like articulate it just goes to show how much of my experience with all of this is very felt very sentient and not mental or verbal at all it's just as if like there's like a pooling sensation 
and like something feels like it goes like this there's just like an opening but at the same time that there's an opening there's like um, a merging it's really really hard to explain <laughs> but I, I also think what's happening is that this is shutting off and this is like tuning in I think the reason it's so profound for me is that I am so dominated by air elementally from an astrological sense which means i have a tendency to be extremely in my head and very very mentally focused um, and it's a challenge for me to be in my body and to experience things more from that perspective so i think that that's why music has been so such a profound um i don't even want to call it a tool i consider it more of a relationship to be honest so after verve remixed this was like the time when like napster was really big my first kind of like house music find were kind of like the upbeat sexy ohm records naked music style of house music i consider it to be very sort of like san francisco style house i'm thinking of people like miguel miggs Mark Farina, old school Cascade before he became like Jack and House weird Cascade. I was very into that style of house. It's to me now it's a little bit too syrupy sweet a lot of it, but it was very a very easy way to get into house. I was also really into Blue 6 and I found out about Blue 6 because they actually were I had this set of yoga DVDs. It's so funny to relive all of this. <laughs> I had this set of yoga DVDs. They had been produced by MTV. And the background music for these CDs was Blue Six music. So Blue Six, I think, was actually a duo of two guys. One of whom I am almost positive is someone named Jay Hannon, I think, or Andy Cato. I can never remember, but there's all this overlap around this time that I was discovering all this music. But fell in love with Blue Six. I still play their music to this day. It's so good. From there, I fell into what I actually consider to be, I realize I'm, I'm gesticulating like way too much in this video. I think that that's how I found out about what is the most pivotal discovery in my house music evolution, I guess. And it is two compilations called Lazy Dog. I think they're just called the Lazy Dog compilations. Both sets have two CDs, so there's four CDs in total. I think Ben Watt is on both compilations, and then Andy Cato, who is half of Groove Armada, was on one of the compilations with Ben Watt, and Jay Hannon, who I'm pretty sure was half of Blue Six, is on the other compilation. And by on it, I mean those DJs and producers are selecting the tracks, curating the selection, and doing the mix. So, so, so important to me. I can't even tell you. Learning more about Ben Watt, he is married to Tracy Thorne, and together they were everything but the girl who I knew the song Missing in high school. I'm sure anyone around my age probably does as well. It was like a a really really big hit around that time but what a lot of people don't know about everything but the girl is that they were incredibly prolific beyond just that track and they are two of the most insanely talented artists that is still like they kind of like it chokes me up to think about um i've since read tracy thorne's it's like an autobiographical piece about her music narrative, basically. It's called Bedsit Disco Queen. I highly recommend it. My favorite number one track of all time is a deep dish featuring everything but the girl track called The Future of the Future, Stay Gold. So if you ever see me hashtagging Stay Gold, that's where that comes from. And that track is on one of the Lazy Dog compilations. So this was just a totally like golden era for me this time. It was 2004 to like 2006, I would say. Interestingly, that was probably the hardest personal phase in my life to date. 
just in terms of what I was going through sort of in life. So it's like, it's funny, making this video is very cathartic in a way because I'm like putting pieces together that I, that I hadn't really. So I think I'm gonna have to save the DJ narrative history for another video. I didn't realize I was going to be talking so in detail about just my relationship with music. For me, I'm just gonna give you like a brief teaser so that you'll come back and watch the DJ narrative video. Around this time when I was falling in love with House, the desire to want to learn to DJ was co-evolving. You can't really be into house music without sort of learning, at least learning about DJ culture because, I mean, I feel like at the time this whole world has changed a lot and evolved that I will probably touch on. Any house music you were listening to, the producers of that for the most part were DJing out, so it's sort of like you fall in love with the music, you want to know who makes it, and then you see that they're like out in clubs playing their music, but also like lots of other music as well. House music lends itself to something in DJing called long blends, and this is basically taking two tracks that are the same BPM or beats per minute and laying them on top of each other to essentially create a third sound or a melding of those two tracks, and it's a a way to transition in and out of tracks seamlessly in a club, on a dance floor, at a rave, what have you. This is because house music is on something called a 4x4 four four beat. Again, it was like my piano lessons served me well. I used to like practice to a metronome. You can match two tracks up, layer them. It creates literally something magical to me, and that was how I started feeling. I became literally obsessed with the blending of tracks and just like listening to these continuous mixes like the Lazy Dog continuous mix, listening to those 10 tracks blended over the course of an hour was like a spiritual experience for me. I mean, I know that probably sounds hyperbolic and maybe weird to some of you, but that's what it was for me. The way that tracks would be put together just felt so beautiful. And I wanted to learn how to do that and I wanted to do something like that in the moment that was just totally organic in that moment and different every time you do it. Now there's a whole discussion around this because the formatting of DJing has changed so much. It's gone from originally on vinyl records to CDJs to now digitally and there's so much to say on all of those different facets of DJing from my perspective. 2006 was when I bought my first set of turntables and I started learning to beat match in my bedroom. I was living in Chicago at the time. It was like on Napster every day, like I was in chat rooms, I was learning about new music, I was just like voraciously absorbing all of it. And the last thing I will say before I close out, close out this video is that I was never a partier. I had never been to a rave. I had never been to, I had been to clubs like in college and stuff, but they, it was like not a house music sort of club situation. It was like, I don't know, like a hip hop club, I guess, or yeah, not house music clubs. So I had no experience actually like partying to this music at all, which if you are into house music or you've ever been part of any of those communities, I feel like pretty much everybody at a club is largely there to party and maybe they like the music because it's conducive to partying. But I feel like it's quite uncommon, honestly, to find people that have this deep appreciation for the music irrespective of the partying that comes along with it. And I do not say that at all to pass judgment or set myself apart from that because I have done both now, but coming into the party scene after developing a love for music was a very strange experience. And I felt honestly like that's like a whole other video. It was the discovery of like a whole other way of like experiencing the music and learning about dance music culture and stuff. But if you liked hearing about this and you would like to hear me continue to talk, <laughs> extemporaneously about more specifically I guess my history with DJing and my experience learning all of that. I was part of an all women's DJ collective from 2009 to I guess 2011 or 12 and I've continued to DJ uh, with other friends of mine not part of that collective since then and to this day. So if you'd be curious to hear more of that please um, like this video, leave me a comment, let me know. Thank you for watching this non-beauty related content. Actually, to me, it is beauty content because I have a very broad 
expansive definition of what beauty is to me, and music is front and center there, hence the name of my channel. So I hope you enjoyed this. I would, I would just love to chat with you in the comments. Nothing brings me more happiness than connecting with people over music. It's like where my heart is, I think. The, even just making this video totally made me feel so thankful that it's been a part of my life as long as it has. So I would love to hear about your stories or your experiences or any thoughts you have. And I'll see you guys in my next video soon. Bye.